All right, so on a problem like this, when we want to be able to identify the center and the radius of a circle, what we need to do is first put it into our standard form. And by looking at it in the standard form, if we can have this as quantity squared, our h and our k are going to represent our center, and r is going to represent our radius. But notice how in this standard form here, r is being squared. So we're going to have to make sure we're solving for r, which is the radius, not r squared. So we have this in general form. And this does not look like that. So when we want to be able to identify h and k, what we need to do is create this binomial squared. And the process for creating the binomial squared is called completing the square. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to complete the square for the x values as well as for the y values, and then go ahead and set it equal to r squared. Um, so therefore, we can identify r. So how do we go ahead and complete the square for a problem like this? Well, first thing, if we're going to complete the square for x's and for y's, then we're going to want to do them separately. So we're going to want to group them together. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this with x's and y's. Okay, so what you can see here is, again, um, all I did was I just grouped the x squared plus the um, 8x. I took the y squared, and then I made the mistake, as you notice, that I was adding. But it's, again, it's not a plus 6y, right? It's a minus 6y. And then what I did is I just added the 24 to both sides. Because, um, again, we want all the constants here to be over here on the right-hand side. All right, so now what we need to do is complete the square. So what we need to do is we need to find the value, a lot of times we call it c, that is going to create a perfect square trinomial. Because perfect square trinomials can be factored into binomial squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these and go ahead and um, find our value and write them with a c. So therefore you can kind of get a visual idea of what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so I have the C, and a lot of times students will get confused, and they're like, where's the C come from? What does C represent? How do you find C? Well, remember, when we're completing the square, and we're trying to find this value that creates the perfect square trinomial, and we're given these two terms, C is just going to be B divided by 2 squared. Now, when we're talking about B, that's come from the quadratic form. Okay, so when we have a quadratic, b represents that coefficient of your linear term. So you can see here, I have the x squared, right, the ax squared. There's no number in front. You always got to make sure you factor that out. But the b here, in this case, is going to be an 8. So c is going to be the value that is going to create a perfect square trinomial. And again, remember, perfect square trinomials can be factored down to binomial squared. So let's go ahead and find the c for this example, as well as the c for this example. Okay, so you can see here, whenever we're squaring them, it's always going to be a positive value. It doesn't matter if your um, b is um, positive or if your b is negative. Since you're squaring it, you're going to get a 16 and a 9. So to avoid myself having to rewrite these, I'm just going to go ahead and put the 16 and the 9 into these expressions. All right, so the faster and better you um, or more confident you are with completing the square, the easier this is going to be able to do. A lot of times we start doing these in our head, and that really helps when you're doing conic sections like this because you get a lot of practice um, completing the square. So again, this is a perfect square trinomial. So again, the main thing to understand why having a perfect square trinomial is so important is because this is really easy to factor. What two numbers that are exactly the same, or think about this, what two numbers multiply to give you 16, add to give you 8? Well, that's going to be an x plus 4 times an x plus 4. Over here, what two numbers multiply to give you 9, add to give you negative 6? Well, that's going to be an x minus 3 times an x minus 3. When you know it's a perfect square trinomial, you know those, those two values are going to be exactly the same. Either both positive or they're going to be both negative. But again, you can that's the nice thing about completing the square. You know it's always going to be that same value. However, we don't really like to write it in factored form. We want to write it in this form. OK, now one thing I forgot to do, and this is really, really important, is because when you add, and I kind of ran out of space, and that's why I forgot about it. But remember, when you add a 16 here on this left-hand side, you just can't randomly add a 16 into this expression. Yes, that made our perfect square trinomial, our binomial here, right? But what we need to do is whenever we add that to the left-hand side, we have to add that to the right-hand side. The same thing over here. If I'm adding a 9 into this expression, I also have to add the 9 over here on the right-hand side. So. I actually don't have a 24 in this case, right? So what I'm actually going to have is I'm going to have a 49. OK, so now what we have now obtained here is we have now attained here a x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 49, which is exactly in my standard form. So we got to be able to find the vertex. Now again, remember what I said here. When I want to identify the vertex, that is h comma k. 
that, I'm sorry, the center, not the vertex. The center is h comma k, and the radius is equal to r, okay? So when we look about this, this is saying x minus h, right? So this h, a lot of times what we can do is put parentheses around this and around the k. So it's x minus h. Well, we got that for this, right? That's y minus 3. But if I put parentheses around the 4, I don't have an x minus a 4, right? Uh, what I need to do is understand that this also can be written as a x minus a negative 4. And that's what's so important here about these problems, understanding what your h and k is. Your h, in this case, is actually a negative 4, right? Because the x minus a negative 4 is still x plus 4. So my center in this case is going to be a negative 4. My k in this case is going to be a positive 3, because you can see how I have it written in this standard form. And then remember, do not make a mistake here of thinking that your radius is going to be 49. That's a really, really big radius, especially if you had to graph this. The radius is going to be the square root of um, this number, which is 49, which is going to be a equal to a 7. So I didn't really leave myself enough room, but if we wanted to graph this, we can still probably go ahead and do this. Um, we're going to have a center at negative 4, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Right, so we're right there. And then all we simply need to do is just kind of go over you know, seven units and try a nice little circle. So I already went four, so let's do three more to the right. And again, you can also you know, divvy up some different uh, points here from there, um, left and right, up or down, however you want to. But ladies and gentlemen, that is how you identify the center and the radius. And if you're so lucky, you can go and graph it. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I know you're gonna enjoy the next video I have for you here.